Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. So today's video is going to be about Meshcore and in particular the firmware for the T-Deck and the T-Deck Plus which is this lovely firmware we've got here. Now this is kind of going to be a bit of a run through of the firmware and to give you an idea of the features and kind of how it works, just like a quick like intro to it, um, which will never be quick because I just waffle on. but. Um, Hopefully it will help you kind of work out if you've got if you've got this firmware which is available on our Discord, um, it will help you make a bit of sense uh, to it. I feel like I just needed to do this because things are moving so quick at the moment. We just need to kind of you know have a bit of a bit of a kind of regroup and, and let people know how how this all works. So when you first load up your T deck, I'm not going to show you the firmware installation process because we've got in, we've got guides and stuff on the Discord. But basically, you'll start off on this new network screen, which allows you to create um, profiles for the different networks. Meshtastic won't be there. This is like a test firmware, so it's not going to be on um, the uh, the official version. So we can create a mesh core profile, and we can just go into this, and we want to type in the frequency. 867.500 it's a an ism frequency which we're allowed to use for this purpose and you can basically create that by hitting the enter key now spreading factor we're using 10 on this um, as opposed to long fast on meshtastic which is actually 11 so this speeds things up massively and in my testing it doesn't actually make any difference to the range at all it's exactly the same but it's just a hell of a lot faster with the other settings that we've got under the hood on this so spreading factor of 10 then you go into here and you can create that network by hitting the enter button and that will basically bring up um, your new network so i won't do that on this one because we've already got it on here so we'll go over to this device this is my personal device that i'm using all the time so the next thing you want to do is go into this mesh core 867 or whatever you've called it as a profile hit enter there and then hit enter again on the identity this is where you set your name um, for your for your node basically so that's what you want to do you just want to put your name in there so that you uh, can yeah obviously be identified on there or you can put whatever you like in there it doesn't really matter so once you've done that, you can add a primary channel, and this is like a public channel. Um, now I'm going to go into why a public channel is probably not a good idea at the moment because we've got um, better features than this. So this is a bit like the sort of long fast channel on Meshtastic. It just um, creates a flood based channel that just sends messages out and they hop across the network and maybe they hit people, maybe they don't. You never really know. They just kind of go out there. Um, so this is the key. You can use this key if you want to join it. This is no secret this is just like the UK what I'm calling as the UK based key for this stuff um, so anyone can kind of you know exchange messages on that without joining groups or doing any other thing other clever stuff so that's that so make a note of that if you want to use that and the next thing you want to going to want to do is take a look in the discover screen so in the discover screen this is kind of like a node list it shows you what's around um, and it shows you the last heard time as well now the thing about mesh core it doesn't spit out many packets at all as in it doesn't constantly bombard the airwaves with your gps location or you know your node id packets and all that other information so it's quite likely if you come here you might not actually see a lot to start with because it's going to be a while probably before something something advertises itself now when you advertise yourself you can do this manually you advertise yourself to the network as being basically present and reachable. So it's kind of a bit like um, Reticulum in that way, where you, you kind of announce yourself on, on Reticulum, but you basically adv advertise yourself in MeshCore. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, the first way is manually. You can do it like this. You can actually send your ID locally. Now, the send ID locally, what it does effectively is just literally send out a zero hop packet which is not going to get repeated by a repeater it's purely for like if you're you know with your group and you bring another t deck close to your one you can just literally send your id out and it will just this one will pick it up and it will pretty much go no further on the mesh such a good way of doing it because it doesn't spam the entire network with with um you know announce packets or, or anything else like that like like a node id um, it doesn't do that. So that's pretty cool. So if you've got a friend, you can just bring their T-Deck closer or, or whatever other device later on. Um, you can hit, hit that send ID local and it will send a beacon out and this one will pick it up and you'll be on that person's list. Discover list. Now, 
Now you might notice there's a few different icons on here. You've got basically these little arrows. That means it's there's a repeater. So Hartford repeater, which is my repeater outside, um, and Subnet repeater as well, which is a new one. Um, shout out to you, Mark. You've just set that one up. So you can see here, he is actually three hops away from um, my my T deck here. So it will be my repeater. Probably one of these Hartford Eve ones. Um, there's another one that's not shown at the moment. Um, and yeah, we would have literally, literally hopped across there. So you can see here, last scene is like 33 minutes ago. So, you know, that was the last uh, advertised packet that was sent out. So super frugal on, on those packets. Um, it can mean that you might not see stuff. It's, it's kind of a mentality to get your head around because whilst Mistastic kind of does make everything really visible it, that wastes a hell of a lot of bandwidth and that's why you get issues with like your your messages not getting sent because there's it's, it's colliding with um, or competing with lots of other traffic so what we're trying to do with MeshCore is keep it really really frugal so that it you know you've got plenty of space to breathe and send packets backwards and forwards and and everything else um, and that just makes messaging a, a lot better so that's the repeaters. Those are the repeaters there. So you might notice this Hartford repeater here is green. And that is because I've added that one to my home. So you can see here there's a remove to home. That becomes add, that turns into add to home if you're not, if you haven't added it. What that means is even when you add it to home, it'll end up on your front screen here. So you can see Hartford there. Once you've got a repeater on the front screen, then what you can do is you can go into it and you can get statistics from it. So you can find out, you know, all sorts of information. The battery voltage is obviously not right because it's been powered in another way. Um, but also you can do command line to the repeater, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, you can do things like clock, which gives you the um, gives you the time back. Uh, it's timing out that way. Um, and you can set the clock basically sync the clock because this is actually a Helltech node on the other end of this which doesn't have a real-time clock so you can sync the clock manually um, by doing clock sync as a command um, and there's other things you can do here like reboot as well and you can also send an advert which is really neat so this advert will propagate across the entire network across every repeater um, and it'll carry on going um, that is a way of getting your repeater seen out there by other nodes. Not that you really should have to worry about having a repeater seen really, because it's you that actually really wants to be seen, not necessarily your repeater. So don't worry if you don't see repeaters, it should, if there's one in the area, it'll just route through it um, automatically. So here at the top here, you've got a little zero, and that is basically showing that it's zero hops uh, to this repeater. So effectively, we are going direct to our repeater, zero hops. It's not flood. This little symbol here means that it's an, a direct communication with the repeater. So effectively, it's just going from this device to the repeater, and that's it. Um, what is gonna happen after that is obviously the repeaters, you know, if you if you do an advert, then every repeater is gonna receive that and then push it out, uh, like retransmit it. But Effectively, if you're talking to a repeater directly, then yeah, basically you're, it's not going out. Um, you know, it's not going out wider than wider than directly. So look, we here we've got a little um, message here that's turned up in the group. So I'll come on to groups. Basically, groups is gonna change the way um, we group message. I think this this is just insanely good. <laughs> this this um, this feature, and this was a bit of a. Um, a bit of a surprise really because we were kind of thinking of how to do this and we did incorporate a normal group channel that just floods but what we've done on this one um, or more of what Scott's done um, is create this amazing uh, thing like a chat room basically so what you do effectively is you log into this with a password so once you've logged into this it will push you messages that you haven't received before and um, it's not a huge list but it's set to like 15 messages or something um, at the moment but effectively it's a bit like a bbs so when you log into this it will literally just send you um, all the messages you've missed and fill in the gaps it doesn't just send every message over the network it just sends the ones that you haven't got so it's not even um, you know taking a huge amount of, of bandwidth uh, in that way so 
yeah, basically, here we go. We've got these here. If you hit post, you can then just say, I can say here, um, test received, um, I before we. <laughs> and what happens here is it says times at timed out, but <laughs> it actually says posted there. Um, sometimes there will be a timeout. We need to tune the timeout delays and stuff. But that has been received and that has been posted on a server, which is just a Helltech bit like this. So that is running on basically like a Helltech V3 like this. Um, it's just a room server. It just does that. It's just literally sitting in the other room um, and it will obviously work its way through the mesh um, in that way. But you can actually have a dual repeater and chat room um, or room type uh, setup. So you can have one device that does both repeater and room, which is so cool and it'll run on a rack as well and it won't run out of memory <laughs> so this is pretty cool so basically what i've done here is i've just obviously sent a message we've seen that it's been um, received and it's landed on the server now whoever has posted this message we don't actually know because they haven't actually um, made themselves they haven't advertised themselves or i haven't picked up their advertisement packet um yet so this is early days here. We're all testing this. So this is why this has happened. You get a question mark on there, but the message still comes through if if that person is not in your contact list, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's going to sit on here until I logged in. And then, you know, if I didn't see that message now, I would have got that the next time I turned on and connected and the room server saw me and sent me the message. I mean, mind blowing, huh? So because of the way this works, it's really going to highlight um, what is bad with people's setups out there in terms of like uh, how well they're getting out because you know on Meshtastic or whatever you put an antenna up and you just hope for the best if it if stuff gets out people kind of will come back and say hi or not and maybe some messages deliver maybe some don't it's purely luck of the draw um, and that is that's the thing and you can look at your node list and you can kind of see, you know, oh, I've got a node closest to me that's got like a minus, you know, 110 and the signal to noise ratios, um, you know, pretty good. It's like zero. Um, so maybe the chances are that is the one I'm going through. Um, and you do trace routes. And of course, that never really paints a good picture because you kind of get lots of different, um, lots of, <laughs> there's my cat in the background, lots of different um, nodes in the vicinity will reply and become part of that that kind of path so this will kind of make it really important for you to make sure you get a connection to a local repeater um, or you know find out where the local repeater is and just point a yard at it or that kind of that kind of thing and that's going to give you the best chance of kind of getting your message um, received out there so we're up to like 13 minutes in this video already I told you it was going to be a long one um, but yeah so look here we've got sub has appeared now um, three hops away so that's pretty interesting so just skipping forward it's the morning now and I've actually managed to make contact with sub um, via DM so you can see here he's three hops away it's worked out the route through the repeaters and we're successfully communicating there now this is a this is a pretty rough old path this one um, because yeah you've got the hill in the middle we've got two two repeaters and yeah his signal to the repeaters not that great so this takes a little bit of work to get um get this working um and it probably will change as, as other repeaters come online um but yeah successfully managed to communicate and we know that we've actually received these messages at one well, that i know that he's received these messages um because i'm getting all the all the right confirmations back also my t5 has appeared here <laughs> on the desk and it's it's showing in the discover list as well so what i can do now is i can show you what you would do to try and um, basically communicate with this um, in a direct message way and show you how it will discover a route obviously the route isn't going to be complex because it's they're right next to each other so they should just find each other um basically we go into the actual t5 in see it hasn't got a gps um, position and time and all that that's why it's showing 20,011 days last heard we can add this to home i've already added it to home so we can add it in there and basically if we go back to go down to the t5 on here now, when you're in the DM screen, you've got this little question mark at the top. That means that there's no route. It hasn't. It's not. It doesn't know the route between um, this and the T5. So if we start and send a message out on here, 
what it will attempt to do is just send a flood out and just see what happens. And you can see here that's turned to a zero, which means that it knows that it's obviously zero, zero hops away. And this has re responded um, first. And you can see there I am in the list and there's my message. So that's cool. And obviously we can just send a message back um, on there and it should just go straight back. Now, if you want to see the number of hops on this screen, you can actually go into maybe like another um, another channel here and you can turn the timestamps on. You can see here, we've got the timestamps and the number of hops away. But if we go to T5, you'll see zero hops as well. So what happens if this moves out of the area, then obviously it may have to go through a repeater to reach it. The, an the antennas on these things are pretty pretty um, minimal. So these will be needing repeaters to, to work at any meaningful distance. Now that zero hop is persistent. So it's always gonna try and hit this directly. So what you might have to do is reset the path. And when you reset the path, it's gonna start that process again to find that T5 wherever it is on the mesh. Now there is a reason why you have to reset that path manually um, and that's just basically because it's just to reduce the amount of flooding that happens um, on the network as well. So when you reset that path it will just default to finding that route by flooding again. So in the future we could potentially have hard-coded paths. If you know the network topology, or you've set it up, you know the route and you've worked out the landscape, you could actually plan your mesh and you could have hard-coded paths. There's no reason why you couldn't do that with this system. So the possibilities to make this super reliable are literally there. Um, I just love the fact that you can just dive into a repeater here and just get stats on it. Um, again, battery voltage is not shown there, but you know you can go into a command line and I can trigger an advert from that repeater, which is five kilometers away, and you know it is so quick. Look at that, it just comes straight back. So guys, I know there's a lot of you testing this stuff at the moment on Discord. Um, the source code for the repeater and everything else is available on GitHub. Um, this software is also available on my um, Discord as well. So if you want to get a, get your hands on this, the latest version, this exact version that's on here, it's on Discord. Um, links are below to join that. Um, yeah, so it's all it's all kind of out there for testing at the moment, um, and we'd appreciate feedback on it. We're still fine tuning a few bits and pieces here and there, but so far so good, guys. I'm I'm super impressed with how this is going so far, and um, I hope you guys are too as well. So that's going to be it for this one. Um, as I say, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, dive into the Discord. If you are a developer and you want to help with this stuff, then we really need help, um, You know, especially with things like the Android app and, um, and other, other bits and pieces. Like Scott's heart's really in the embedded stuff. You know, I'm flat out with testing and the RF side of things. Um, yeah, so we just need people on, on board to help. So if you want to, want to get involved in the project, then just dive in. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Catch you next time.